Okay, uh, the orange tiny terror. This is Dan's um, amplifier. He bought it second hand. Uh, the problem was it kept blowing fuses, apparently. And he took it to a guy who looked at it uh, and gave it back. And then it stopped working again. When I got it, the main power fuse has two fuses. It has a main power fuse and a high tension fuse in this end. Uh, what was that? That was just a wire falling. Oh no, that was these, these things. Uh, the mains fuse is actually hiding in here above the IEC uh, power connector. This one here is the high tension fuse, and it had a fuse holder which is actually attached to the motherboard. This is a manufacturing um, bean counting exercise, all to do with the. Uh, circuit board and um, her problems with heat and expansion if you attach the board front and back because uh, it's attached to the front with all the pots uh, it's joined to this board if they did the same thing on the back uh, when this thing because all the valves are actually attached to the valve sockets are on the circuit board on modern amplifiers just about all of them so the heat these things get incredibly hot and the heat just destroys the circuit board eventually um, and you do not want to put anchor it where it can't um, uh, it's just going to fall apart as it uh, goes through its cycle of heating up and falling down so what they've done is they've put in this connector that um, does not attach to the back they just have a hole in the back and you kind of poke a screwdriver through and where's the rest of it there's a little barrel that goes down the inside of this um, but it doesn't have any instructions on the back on what you're supposed to do and I would imagine that a lot of the times, I did a quick Google on the uh, internet and saw a lot of people the same problem with this amp, talking about this connector and which way do I turn it and it just seems to spin, I had the same problem. It's a very bad design. Um, it's a built-in problem, basically. So uh, even though I could manage to get the thing uh, connecting again, um, I suggested to uh, Dan that we, we take this out we actually put the fuse holder on the back of the mounted on the chassis and then put some wires to the circuit board which I've done which makes it just a little bit more difficult to pull apart for the next guy but hopefully you won't have to fix this problem <laughs> uh, something else will fall apart because of its heat problems so uh, interesting features of this amp it is a 15 watt, 7 watt switch on the front. Uh, there's many ways that companies do this in amps, the power scaling. In this amp, it's simply um, different taps off the power transformer. So it's actually just running the amp at a lower voltage on uh, the whole amp, the preamp, the power tubes, the whole lot runs at a lower voltage. Um, and after listening to it at low volume, the 7 watt setting definitely is much nicer than the 15 watt setting I find quite harsh which I find with these orange amps anyway and the reason is for the way they sound they do sound different to Fenders and Marshalls and if we have a look at the circuit <coughs> have a look at the circuit of the Tiny Terror you'll notice that the volume control here is a dual pot and not only has it in the normal position after the first triode uh, but it also has another one, gang, in the gang, so it's the same pot, uh, after the next triode. Now this has a really different effect on how the amp behaves to uh, changes in um, volume. It has a post-fader, double gain, train wreck style, uh, Google train wreck. He was a um, uh, kind of amp guru in the 80s who built um, a lot of amps that a lot of the heavy metal guys use, and not only those, lots of guys, highly regarded. I think he might be dead now, I'm not sure. Um, he's famous for this post phase inverter volume control, which nobody else did. Marshall didn't do it. And when they did implement a master volume on their amps, they did it after the tone section, which made the amp operate quite differently. So that's a main factor. Uh, the other two main things to the reason this amp sounds the way it does is if we have a look at the uh, cathode resistors on the phase inverter, this is the standard Schmidt inverter, um, phase inverter. 
used to split this one signal into the push-pull for the two power tubes. Same in Fender, same in Marshall, same in Vox. Um, there are other ways of doing it with half a valve, but this is a nice balanced way, and you get some gain from this as well, interestingly. And the kind of gain you get is controlled by this cathode resistor down here. Now this is four times the size of the cathode resistor uh, normally on a, a Marshall or a Fender. Um, it's the equivalent of having a 2.4 uh, K cap on each cathode of this which is is really going to be clean <laughs> That's going to be some clean amplification at this voltage with these uh, plate resistors So one uh, the other thing I noticed about this phase inverter is it it, it breaks the rule of the Schmidt inverter where the uh, the other side is supposed to have a capa uh, Coupling capacitor on it about ten times the size of this side uh, This is actually to to balance things out and in this amp, I know this is not the only people that did this, and I've tried this in my amps, um, but I went back to the way Fender and Marshall do it um, in their early amps. Yeah, they've got a 0.1 capacitor on the output, basically. Uh, sorry. Yeah, on the output of this, uh, on both sides. Uh, where are we? 147, oh no, here we are. 147, oh no, they get a 4.7, okay. So normally we have a 22 here, input, and 22 on the output. You notice on this one we got 47 nanofarads, or 0.047 microfarads. And on the uh, output we've got uh, 0.1s, which is huge compared to the 22 uh, nanofarad on the Marshall. Uh, so, uh, clean, but with, uh, what this does is it doesn't restrict the response of the um, output section. Um, and it works in tandem with the volume controls. And you notice they have a 500k volume control instead of a 1 meg on a marsh. And all of these things are factors. Uh, easy ways to change the sound. The other thing I noticed is that the cathode resistors on these first two stages, which are fairly standard 100k plate resistors, um, 68k on the input there, which is double what you get out of a Marshall with only one thing plugged into it. So, uh, referencing the current a little bit more on the input of this amp. However, the um, these cathode resistors, uh, well, they're kind of in the middle. I mean, the old early uh, Marshalls and Fenders had a um, 800 ohm cathode resistor, and the bright side of the Marshall had a 2.2 cathode resistor. Um, this one's taken the middle ground, as I've done in some of my amps. I've done the same thing uh, on both these sections, though. So, lots of ways to change the sound of this amp. Um, anyway, that's it. Dan's amp, the Tiny Terror. Hopefully, I won't see it again. Except to play with it.